Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you? It's Wednesday, and Women Crush Wednesday. We know all about that. It's Wednesday, August 16th. I had an amazing birthday. Thank you so much, everyone who wished me. I mean, there were so many birthday wishes on my Facebook page. It is so heartening and beautiful. Thank you. That I... Um, I couldn't even respond to everybody personally, and I wanted to, so I'm going to continue doing that. It was really um, tremendous. I think close to 500 is the number, so that felt really nice. Hi, Eunice. How are you? So we have Women Crush Wednesday today for Smart Start. Wendy Blank is joining us today, and I'm so thrilled to have Wendy Blank with us. I get to see you for lunch, Wendy. Beatrice, good morning. Francine, good morning. So good to see everybody here. Thank you. I love the thumbs up, the hearts, everything. So I was saying I got, I had received hundreds upon hundreds, I think close to five or 600 uh, birthday wishes yesterday. And on my Facebook page, Instagram, wherever. And I can't thank everybody enough. And I try to thank everyone individually but i i couldn't get to it last night i just the whole day i was i ended up uh so anyway i just want to really thank everybody it was really beautiful beautiful so we have my mother in the house hello phyllis how are you today hello gerard himanshu hello where are our regulars uh we need Stephanie and, and a few people, but that's okay. We're going to start because I have you guys here and you've become regulars. Well, we know Eunice is and Beatrice and, and just so happy to have her. There's Stephanie. Stephanie, we're just talking about you. Where is Stephanie? And Jacob, just talking about you. So um, I'm hoping Serena Buski shows up on Smart Start today. Uh, I wanted to speak to her concerns as well. Um, and uh, we'll see. So we have Smart Start. We're going to start the day with uh, looking at some art. And usually what looking at art means is looking at culture and looking at history because it is a way for artists to express themselves through their culture, through being cross-cultural, whatever that means to them, and through their own history and a more um, kind of universal history or global history. And I think especially at this time, I'm seeing a lot of people... Um, very upset about the events of the last few days and wondering, you know, when there's a lot of stress. There's just a lot of stress out there. And so I suggest that Smart Start, you know, I hope it's a place that we can all go and find a respite and kind of take a breath and let it inform the day because at this point we just don't know what's going to happen at any given time in a day. But the tweets and the this and the that and it's just craziness. But I do want to say this, that a lot of what we're feeling, it has been felt in other communities for a very, 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 very long time, kind of on the front lines of it. And we're, in many ways, only seeing it now. So we're kind of new to this horrific party, so to speak. Um, we're kind of new to this feeling of um, you know, marginalization and hatred for some of us. So um, we have to stay vigilant. You have to stay vigilant. You have to continue to do what you do in your life and uh, have your moral compass because you know what's right or wrong and we move forward. So that's what I want to say about that. Look who we have today. We have Faith Ringgold, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite. Yes, Jacob, Phyllis is very loving. She's very sweet and very loving. Um, so Faith Ringgold this morning. And um, I'm really excited, really, really excited about her work. I always have been. She's a, a, an amazing artist, an amazing woman. Uh, she has a, you know, a, like a lot of artists, she has, she comes from so many different kind of um, disciplines and um, has several different jobs in her life. And I do want to say this to the artists on the feed because there's this notion for artists, especially in the contemporary art world, that we find ourselves. That we must, you know, the, the artists have to identify solely as artists and they hide other aspects of their lives. They may be teachers and parents and, and they do a myriad of other things. And I want everybody to come out of the shadows. I want artists, especially women artists, to say, I've 
I'm a teacher or I I have this career too and I have that career because we all are a multiplicity of things and I think that that's very important. I think that Faith's work captures that beautifully. I'm going to read you a little bit about Faith's the Faith. Um, did I not get the whole thing? Okay, so Faith was a teacher. Her mother was a well-known dress designer. Her father was a preacher. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Riyadh. Good morning, Stephanie. So nice to see everybody here today. So um, she studied at City College. She's very well trained in the techniques of Western art. She immersed herself in um, the history of African art as well. Um, her father, who had been a minister, was a gifted storyteller. She has vivid memories of listening in his spirited anecdotes with their wealth of detail, richness of incident and variations on a theme. She also remembers the pleasure of then hearing her mother recount the same stories with another layer of variation. Seminal too were the family traditions in needlework and cloth. Her mother, Willie Ro uh, Posey, was a well-known dress designer and would later become a collaborator on Ringgold's art. She learned quilting from her grandmother, who had learned from her own mother, a former slave. Good morning, Christy. Uh, good morning, Kathleen, I'm sorry, and good morning, Jamie. So what we have here is I, the first piece I'm showing you is Tar Beach, which also became a book of hers, a children's book. So we have this amazing woman art, woman, is also an artist who um, is creating these quilts and we've seen quilts before so remember those and she's telling the story she agrees that she's a storyteller she specifically goes out to tell a very specific story of her America her understanding um, what she wants to impart what she wants to say to the world and I I really love it I love this piece listen to the trees um, it's acrylic on canvas but it's painted and the there's pieces of the border are fabric and um, again this notion of and a lot of a lot of people at a, a particular time and continuing would say that um, a lot of women's art is craft and not necessarily art I completely disagree um, this is, she's raised the level of craft to fine art. A lot of people have, but I wonder if we can think about that notion of craft anyway. Is not cr it, it's such a pejorative term, craft. I mean, women were storytellers. Men were storytellers. We saw in G's Bend when we saw the beautiful quilts of the families of the women in G's Bend. We saw that they sat around the table and they made their quilts. They used the fabric, old fabric they could find from anywhere. And they used this fabric and they created these amazing quilts. And it was a way of connecting to community, to each other, to keeping stories alive, especially the stories of slaves who uh, many at most time, most were illiterate and couldn't write their own stories. And so this is a way through this quote unquote craft, which I think there's no question is art. Um, these stories become the fabric of their lives and American history. And I just love that. Um, let's see who else. So I want to say this, and I hope Serena gets on the piece. Faith famously said, you can't sit around and wait for someone to say who you are. You need to write it and paint it and do it. And I especially want to, I especially put this quote in here today, thinking about um, the group that I'm working with right now, um, Brainerd Carey's Praxis group, um, really helping artists find a marketplace, but beyond find, helping them find a marketplace, because I think that that's secondary, is to know that your voice as an artist, as a person. So faith doesn't, is, is so important. Let me finish that sentence. Faith doesn't sit around waiting for somebody else to tell her story. She's inspired. She's living at a really rich time. I, um, she's now at this point where it's like 60s, 70s. Um, and there's so much happening in the world. And a lot of her work becomes political 
and obviously feminist. But for today, I really wanted to focus on these story quilts and also juxtapose them to Western art as well. Let me see what Maggie has to say. Look at this quilt. I just love this. Yes, Maggie, this is timely. Yes, considering what is going on in the world. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's very powerful. Hi, Chris. Um, it's very powerful. And I chose this. I was going to choose Kara Walker for today. And um, I love Kara. I love Kara's work. Um, Kara had, uh, Kara spent a considerable amount of time with um, the kids that I mentor uh, when I brought them to um, her her show at the Domino Sugar Factory. Um, but I, I tell you, I'm worried on Facebook because some of the work, I, I had to choose specific work of Faith's and Kara's because, and I will do Kara next week. I'll tell you why I didn't. But there's a lot, there's, a, you know, we're, there's issues of nudity. As you all know, all of you follow Facebook and know Jerry Saltz. He's always being thrown off Facebook for something that he's posted. And most times it's a, it's a painting, you know, from antiquity that's nude. So I have to be very careful here. But um, the reason I'm going to hold Kara to the side is because I just got a really fantastic press release from her gallery last night. And she felt so compelled in September to create a body of work. And uh, that body of work is going to be released at, at Sakima Jenkins, I think. I can't remember when it's for. I had so much information in my head yesterday. But I want to see the new body of work first, and then we'll do Kara. Okay, so in the meantime, let's go back to Faith. Look at this amazing piece. In all my work, I want to make a connection with people to communicate my concerns, which are expressed in my work. I want in some way, I want to in some way touch their lives and give them reinforcement and inspiration for their own problems. I'm inspired by people's quests, powers, and life struggles, and I want to share my stories with them. And what better way? I mean, she, in her words, she sums up so clearly what she's doing with her art. She is a storyteller. She is steeped in the tradition of art history. Can Stephanie, can somebody tell me what piece of art history we may see in this, in this beautiful quilt here? She is inspired by African art, and we'll go into that a little bit more deeper. She has the tradition of um, fabrics and her family. So what better way for her to sum up her work? Or to, her work speaks for itself in many ways. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Renee. Rena, I'm sorry. Um, what better way this is than these quilts and i love these quilts the story quilts so can anybody spot a piece of art that we talk about quite a bit in this i'm gonna wait for this one because i know that there's a, maybe a delay anybody can weigh in here anybody including jean faber i'm gonna start calling on people how about you chris arnold doesn't it, it's like a teacher at a school i'm now calling on people Hi, Robert. How are you? We're talking about Faith Rangold today. Okay, there's a piece of art in here that she's referencing. Van Gogh's Yellow Room. Not quite, but a little bit. Yes, Stephanie, Madonna and Child. There we go. See, we are getting this. Look at that. And Brainerd Carey just entered the room, and I want to welcome him. Um, Brainerd is an amazing artist and educator and mentor to so many artist. Uh, he's got this wonderful page. Um, uh, oh God, Rainer. Praxis Center of Aesthetic. I'm sorry, I have it written down. And you know, Anyway, where he really teaches a large community of artists how to find their place in the world as an artist, which is a very difficult thing to do. So I really um, appreciate uh, the work that he's doing. And m in many ways, this show I put together today was informed by some of that um, as well, because I, as the artists, as I'm working with them to help find their voice, to craft their own um, um, artist statements and such, I, when we think about a perfect artist statement, it's right here. What Faith says about her work is her work. I'm going to read it again. In all my work, 
I want to make a connection with people to communicate my concerns, which are expressed in my work. I want to, in some way, touch their lives and give them reinforcement and inspiration for their own problems. I'm inspired by people's quests, powers, and life struggles, and I like to share my stories with them. That's it. Perfection. Right there. She get it. Oh, my God. Thank you, Kathleen, for coming to my... Uh, damsel in distress moment practice center for aesthetic studies yes brainer great job there yes mark yes mark strodel good morning brainer you are fantastic thank you for all your help yes if you're not a member yet i would say join up immediately okay so anyway let's move on so we see a reference to a madonna and child right we see a reference to a few other paintings but first we're going to go back to that so here's another piece sunny's quilt i just love these i just really you know love what she's done here chris arnold asked the question i missed the beginning is this piece considered outsider art folk art or something else chris arnold you ask an amazing question thank you for that and i'll tell you why because i had uh, you had missed the beginning and that's okay i'm happy you're here um, I talked a little bit about this as being um, uh, quilt and fabric and the notion of craft. And in craft, th this notion of craft, I feel, is very pejorative. Um, because by saying the work, it falls into the level of craft. Women's work, craft, suggests that it's not fine art and that fine art can only be oil on canvas or sculpture or, or um, in male hands, so to speak, or that it doesn't use traditionally females, female traditional mediums. And so I've been saying for quite some time that, you know, artists like Faith Ringel um, take craft and raise it to the level of fine art. But I think that's even, my, in, my, in my own way of speaking, I'm even being disparaging of it. I think that using traditional mediums like fabric, um, storytelling, um, all of this is a way, it is art. And it's just the onus is on the art world, the critics, the art historians to see it that way and not compartmentalize it so much. So I don't, for my way of thinking, I don't look at this as outsider art at all. My notion of outsider art, let's say are is and you tell me if i'm right people that have not been form have studied formally faith ringgold has a tremendous um education and scholarship and understanding of art history tremendous um western art history eastern art history african art um and she uses that and references it here so i hope that i answered that question you had said also uh, it is it folk art again with folk art it also feels like that's a way of talking about, and I could be wrong here, so please weigh in. But for me, it feels like it's a way of saying it's more ethnic art. I'm not, I'm not saying that you're saying that. Um, so I want to say that this is art that this is art of the 20th and 21st century. She's a contemporary artist. Her, she is steeped in the tradition of storytelling, and she found power and her voice in the quilts. Um, so I think, I hope that answers your question. Let's look at this piece, look at this. And this, I think, speaks to that, uh, Chris. I really think that it speaks to that because she's looking at, whose painting is she looking at? Well, we see it, Picasso Studio, sorry. Sometimes I ask really stupid questions. Okay, what was Stephanie saying in the previous piece? Venus de Milo up on top. You know what, it could be, it, it could be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna come back to that. Okay. So we have Faith Ringgold here, and she's looking. It's a quilt, and she's looking at um, Picasso's studio. So, what does she see in Picasso's studio? Am I gonna call on people, or are they just gonna tell me? How about you, Brainerd? You still with us? What do we see in Picasso's studio, Mark? I love calling on people. This is so great. Okay, I will tell you what we see in Picasso's studio, and then we're going to Damsel Avignon. That's what we see. Women, yes. Masks, yes, Beatrice. 
That's right. So here's Picasso's Damsel Avignon. He was inspired by African masks to use these women of Avignon, the prostitutes of Avignon, and he specifically uses Afri their faces as African masks. So Faith takes this story, she puts Picasso in it, in his studio, she shows the African masks, she also um, adds the fabric. I want to read you something from um, the really great um, art critic, um, my God, I'm called drawing blanks today. I'm sorry, Roberta Smith. Roberta, I'm sorry if you, when you watch this, okay. She says, Ringel pushes the boundaries of traditional fine art in her use of cloth as a medium. Activism, I'm sorry, she doesn't say this. This is another. You have to forgive me today, okay? I'm sorry. It was an amazing birthday celebration yesterday, and it just, it's been craziness. These are other notes. Okay, so let's, let's just go with that. Activism informs the choice. Ringel associates the use of cloth with women's work and the medium of quilting resonated in the history of slavery. She expresses her profound feminism and her concerns of identity as an African-American in the choice of material. There are economic issues too. Ringel first stated, uh, started making cloth works because the objects could be stored and transported easily. She developed trunk shows of her work to be exhibited at universities and other spaces for my students from Praxis. Let me read that again to you. She developed trunk shows of her work to be exhibited at universities and other spaces, bypassing traditional middlemen such as art dealers. Ringel not only paints, but she writes elaborate text on the fabric uh, ground as well. Interest, okay. So what Roberta Smith then goes to write about this is, in a wonderfully jumbled Picasso studio, Willa Marie, that's Faith's mother, models for the aging Picasso, while his early masterpiece, Les Dames de l'Avignon, and the African masks that influence the painting look on. Stretched out on layers of bright, exotically patterned fabrics, Willa Marie more than holds her own Okay, we see her there in the middle. Her confident pose brings to mind the imperious nude of Manet's Olympia, another monument of French painting, while her skin color reveals Olympia's black servant. Let me go to that. And I want to hear what your thoughts are about this. You know that, right? Because I'm going to call out Roberta in a minute on something. Um, another, while her skin color recalls Olympia's black servant. The twain are meeting, she seems to say. Get ready. So although the figure looks like the repose of the white woman in Manet's piece, the skin color is of the servant. That's brilliant. I love that. Okay, so let me let me see what everyone's writing so I can answer you. Love these, Maggie. Yeah, me too. They're so complex and absolutely fine art. I agree. Can it also be a commentary on Picasso's constant use of African... Ma it can absolutely be that. Beatrice, absolutely. You bring up a major point, that level of appropriation, right? You, you bring up a really great point. I want to take you to this one that I kind of advertise, so to speak, um, before we go on to another one. Let me find my, someday, I am gonna get more organized. I wanna find this piece for you that we talked about, uh, that I advertised. So look what happens here. We started the week with our sunflowers. And we have, again, Faith, the sunflower quilting bee at Arles. And who does she put in this quilting bee? She puts Sir Jonah Truth, Rosa Parks, Mary McLeod Bethune. It's amazing. I just love it. She puts it right into Van Gogh's sunflowers. Um, yes, it, it, yes, you do see Carrie James Marshall here. I absolutely agree with you, Maggie. So I want to read this um, again from, I 
This is from um, Roberta Smith. The sunflower quilting bee at Arles, another impressive, eff impressive effort, features a formidable cast of prominent black women, Mary McLeod Bethune, Sojourner Truth, and Rosa Parks, working on a sunflower, sunflower patterned quilt in a field of Van Gogh-esque sunflowers. To one side, Van Gogh himself looks on, standing tentatively with a bouquet of sunflowers in his hand. Oh, do you see that? I didn't even see him in there before. Huh. The tribute to female solidarity and individual struggle gets a real force from Ms. Rangel's contrasting depictions of the quilted sunflowers and the painted sunflower field, which make their own political point in purely visual terms. In short, the artist juxtaposes the solidarity, traditionally male activity of painting with the collective, traditionally female one of quilting while fusing their different visual effects into a single work of art. How much do we love that? How much do we love that? So Chris, that also speaks to your point about what are we calling this, right? What are we calling this? Is it craft? Is it outsider art? Is it, is it, um, is it folk art? What are we calling this? And then we're calling this the, I guess the fusion of the, what, what, um, Roberta Smith says this traditionally female way of approaching art and the traditionally male and they're meeting here. And I just think it's absolutely brilliant. Now, this I want to talk to, again, my Praxis and obviously now for my wonderful Praxis students, I want to throw in something here for you because the, the artists on this feed all understand all too well um, art criticism, the, the desire for it, and then once you get it, like the kind of stinging that it can be at times. I think this is an amazing review by Roberta Smith. I have nothing but um, admiration for Roberta's work. Um, but she finishes her review with this sentiment. And I want to say this to the artists. She gets it wrong. She's wrong. She, she really gets her the whole way through. And it's almost as if she has to say something so negative so that she doesn't sound too effusive. So I'm going to let you decide, but I'm going to read the last part. Two problems, she says, both minor, plague Miss Ringle's efforts. One is simply that the fabrics of the patchwork borders seem cheap and unconsidered in comparison to the rich pattern images that they frame. The other is that her texts written in small script that is hard to read seem increasingly vestigial. But for the most part, Miss Ringel's distinctive brand of visual politics speaks clearly for itself. This is where a very important art critic misses the point. And this is what I want to say my lesson, to, you know, or just to the artists. It's just one person's opinion, even if that person is very, very influential. The reason she, she missed the point, because remember when Faith herself started her trunk show because money was a problem? She didn't, act, she didn't go out and buy the most expensive fabrics, right? She, if, if, if these fabrics look cheap or less expensive, it's because they are most likely used fabrics like we saw in G's Bend. We saw these women taking anything that they could find and using them in, in their quilt making, anything that they could find. And so I just find that, um, that piece of criticism there, I, I felt like it's almost like a throwaway. Okay, I have to say something that's a little criti critical because I'm a critic. But anyway, that's that, that, that's my own point. Let me see what Kathleen says. I missed the beginning of now. Here, please explain the name Women Crush Wednesday. Oh, oh, as in Women Crush. Oh, it's a, it's a hashtag, uh, Women Crush Wednesday. You see it all over um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, on social media. It's like every day there's a different day. There's Throwback Thursday. I don't even know the rest of them. But Women Crush Wednesday, meaning that it's a day that we focus on women. For my own purposes here in Smart Start, it's a day that I focus solely on a female artist. Um, okay, 
So, and in speaking of Women Crush Wednesday, let's look at this and I'm going to show you another piece. No other creative field is as close to those who are not white and male as is the visual arts. After I decided to be an artist, the first thing that I had to believe was that I, a black woman, could penetrate the art scene and that further I could do so without sacrificing one iota of my blackness or my femaleness or my humanity. And she did. And so can you. And so can we all. Love this piece. Love double dutch on the bridge, on the Golden Gate Bridge. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It just is it just tells the story. It just tells this story of America, of being African American in America, of our architecture. Of, it just tells the story. She really tells the story. Look at this piece. Picnic, family picnic. It shows just this beautiful slice of life of African American life. On the sides here, I put uh, those two pieces on the side are African fabrics. Um, I looked for vintage African fabrics that may have inspired her, as you can see in the tablecloth and such. So this rich history of these beautiful colors and fabrics coming together. I just really, I just really love that. Let me see. Yes, I love it too. I really do. Yeah, Maggie, the, the criticism feels so judgmental. But I think, see, I think that the fabrics, um, I think that she was looking for simpler fabrics and that was her intention. I agree. Okay, um, Kathleen, brilliant. The border reminds me of borders sometimes found in Indian miniature and it worked. Yeah, you know what, Kathleen, that's really brilliant because it's true. She was very, very inspired um, also by Indian art. This is a, this is a, a woman who, James Baldwin has inspired her work, um, Langston Hughes inspired her work, Indian art, Cubism, um, Western art, Eastern art, and it all comes together as American art. Not female American art, yes, African American art, but for me, American art, an American artist. Question. I see some of the materials are listed. What are the sizes? They're very, very large, Chris. I, I'll get you those sizes, okay? Um, I will get you, but they're very, the um, the quilt, this piece I just didn't have the aqua, uh, the information, but I will get that for you. But the, the, the quilts go up to like 80 feet, 80 inches, I'm sorry. Love this, I showed this before, but look at, look at this, look at this look, Sunny's quilt, at music and the city and the fabrics and the architecture. How great is that? How beautiful is that? She found this language saying, double Dutch, he does fine artwork in wonder. Oh, I didn't know about him, Christina. Let me, yeah, I'll look. So um, I love this. She doesn't, she found her voice. She found her voice and there's a place for it. And we all, and all the artists, find their voice. They do. We just have to continue and just stay vigilant with it. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's... Okay, so let's go back to this one because we were talking about um, the Venus de Milo being on top. See, I see this also as an extension of the Manet piece on top, that kind of reposing um, figure, but this one is, uh, this figure is dressed, um, but I do see it kind of as an extension of that. Um, her kind of look at this this Western art. I'm trying to see if there's something maybe that I did not show you. Um, let me just, I think that's it. I think I did show you. So I wanna leave you with this and then I'm gonna leave you with an image because I think it's very important. You can't sit around and wait for someone to say who you are. You need to write it and paint it and do it. And we all need that, just not even, not just the artists, we all, we cannot wait to be defined. Um, we cannot wait for someone else to define us because when <laughs> we see what's happening now in the world, in our country, we have these factions that think that they're going to define who is American, who isn't American, who believes this, who believes that. 
This is the human connection. This is, we're all human. Um, the baby. Yes, I see this baby as white. It's, it, the baby looks white to me. I agree with you. Is that Stephanie who said that? Yeah. So, um, yeah, tell your story. So I want to thank you all. I always love being here with you guys. I, I really do. Um, I want you to continue to reflect on Faith. And her amazing story as, as a woman artist finding her voice in an all-male white art world, um, not, not willing to give up what she wants to say, what her tradition is. Her father is a preacher. Her mother is a dressmaker. It all comes together in her work as a storyteller. She stays true to who she is. And she gives us, with that, a new look at America, a new slice of American life, and in all of its richness, the tapestry, the quilt, everything that it brings together, its roots in Africa, the Western art, Eastern art, all of it comes together and it forms this incredible body of work that is solely Faith Ringgold. So thank you all for being here. I'm continuing to um, get your um, feedback on the pra um, Praxis um, thread. So if I miss anybody because the thread's gotten so long now, please just um, rewrite your question. And anybody else, well, not anybody else, everybody here, please, um, anything that you find is germane or images that you want to post about this work or quotes that you want to post about, please do. Um, you know, I, I'm open to it all. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And whatever is happening out there, let's just, let's, let's stay vigilant. Let's stay vigilant. We, we take a moment, look at art, think about those who have come before us that have suffered through so much, so much. This is a moment in time in America, um, probably one that's been coming for a long time. And we, we have to just keep our moral compass so clear. Thank you all very much. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And um, I will see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mark. The Women Crush Wednesday, right? Thank you so much, Beatrice. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. And Faith, nobody crushes Wednesday like Faith does. Love that. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.